I can do the. Yeah. Um. <laughs> <laughs> I used to do that all the time. Um. So it is recording right now. Okay. And um, test, test, test. Just one, yeah. two, three. Testing one. Just two. want to make sure the levels are good. Yeah. Dudes to Dads is a podcast to help men understand and navigate the transition of being a single dude into a family man. How do we make sense of it all? Well, we probably won't be able to, but let's go ahead and have some fun trying. Welcome to podcast number two. Uh, I'm your host, Jason Kreidman. I'm Alan Bush, co-host and producer of Deuce of Dads. How's it going today, Alan? Wonderful. Wonderful. <laughs> Alan makes sure all our technical stuff's working, also uh, helps me kind of move the show along, and certainly provides the uh, dude factor here. <laughs> As I do not have children yet. Yet. I will be there, though. There you go. <laughs> um, we've got a good show, though. Today, we're going to start off with uh, stuff to do, yeah. and um, specifically giving some recommendations. I was reading online, and it was about... Uh, collecting and so i want to talk a little bit about cool. that yeah yeah. I, yeah I had a few collections when i was a kid so, so you will like this cool um, then we'll go into the battlefield these uh this is some situations that maybe aren't as nice to talk about but uh <laughs> some battles and some war zones that you, you can get into with your kids oh sure um then we're going to move into supercharge where you know i've got some Excellent product recommendations that worked for me. This one is about something to keep diaper rash away. Oh, the fun <laughs> part of children raising. <laughs> Absolutely. And we've got a mailbag. We actually, uh, after our first episode, we've got, we got, we, we got some mail. Uh, yeah. Some people listened to the show. <laughs> and uh, it was one. We yeah. got one good yeah, one. Well, we had, that's good. We had a little solicited. bit of spam, but uh, <laughs> we got one good one. Sure. So, and then we're we'll, uh, going to talk about some homework. And, um, we get homework already. Yes, not everybody loves homework, but this is homework that's actually going to improve the relationship you have with your children. And okay. so these are some tips that I've got gathered yeah. over the over time, and I, I think people will like them. Awesome. Another segment called survival tips, and really this is you know how to deal with your significant other, whether you got a girlfriend or spouse or yeah. wife, you know, uh, and kind of how to survive the relationship. Maybe some things you can do. Great. And uh, we pick a topic for the day, and that's where. You know, we kind of we pick a topic that might be interesting, and so and we have an open discussion about that. Okay. And of course, one of the most popular segments, uh, <laughs> smooth, operator. smooth operator. This is really how to woo your woman, and 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 maybe a little bit more on the romantic side, uh, yeah. how to swoon her, and uh, we'll talk a little bit about that. <laughs> All so. right, you're gonna give some tips. <laughs> well, sure. <laughs> so now on stuff to do, I want to talk about an article I read on a website called Dad Can Do. I thought this was great. Mm -hmm. um, there was a gentleman, Chris Bernardo, wrote an article on how to start your kids collecting as a hobby. And Perfect. I thought this was really cool because yeah. as a kid, I actually, I collected like baseball cards. Right. And Which a lot of kids do. Yeah. yeah. And my dad got involved with me. And so we would go to shows together. We would do some collecting together. Yeah. Of course, I also kept begging him to buy the cards. <laughs> um, but it, it became something where the experience of us doing that together was enjoyable. And I remember a lot of those times. We would travel a little bit, sometimes yeah. to some of the bigger places. And so one of the things I, I was talking to somebody else about is you know, the idea of collecting and whether that be stamps, mm -hmm. you know, if you have dolls, sure. whatever that is, um, comic books, you think? Comic books, yeah. yeah I mean, I had a collection of comics when I was a kid. I don't know if it's something I could share necessarily, but it is a collection. It's something that actually... Well, there's comic book shows. There yeah. are, are all kinds of the stores. Are. You know, comic book stores. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, and you could even do stuff that doesn't really cost a lot of money. In fact, right. whether that... Uh, it's funny. My, <laughs> my grandma uh, used to give me rubber bands <laughs> because I made a rubber band ball. No oh, joke. Okay. This is I'm, this is on. I made a rubber band ball. So she would. I would see her. You know, every once in a while, and she would bring a bunch of rubber bands yeah. to me. 
And it was this weird sort of connection thing that she knew that I liked these rubber bands. I made these like bouncy balls out of these rubber bands. Yeah. And so when she saw me, she would bring the rubber bands. And that oh. was kind of, it was a pretty cool thing. And so it doesn't have to cost a lot of money. Yeah, yeah. But the idea is that you can start collecting something. Sure. Um, except I mean, maybe not trash, although, you know, <laughs> when, when you're a kid, kind of kids do that. I mean, I, I tell you, my kids <laughs> collect stuff like, you know. Inexplicable I mean, items. Yeah, inexplicable. <laughs> what, what is that? Well, it's a piece of glass. And it's like, why are you collecting little pieces of shard glass? You know? um, but definitely the idea of, you know, collecting something allows you to share that time with them. Um, it, you know, gives them the idea that they might be able to learn facts about something. Yeah. So, you know? like, um, seashells, for example, totally. might be a good one. Yep. You know, you know, or like, uh, like you mentioned, stamps. Assuming before, you live near the beach, we uh, well, do. We yeah. happen to live or near you the beach. Vis- yeah, exactly. <laughs> and you visit beaches, maybe, right. and uh, you rocks. don't have an opportunity. Rocks, <laughs> rocks, collect rocks. You're in the middle of the country. That's all there is is rocks. This one is igneous, yes. and here's metamorphic. No, but it, yeah, you can share. You get to wow, and to, and so whether boy or girl doesn't really matter. You find something that is sort of commonality, and you want to be interested in it too. It's not sure. something that just your child is interested in right you want to find something that you know um if you're a sports fan that you know memorabilia could work right um you know like i said or if you're handy with something you could find other little tools or you know pictures i mean there's all kinds of stuff you could do as a collecting yeah um and and get them to learn to sort of appreciate that yeah yeah so that i just think that's a it's, it's an interesting thing of you know when you're trying to figure out stuff to do with your kids yeah you that that's a way to to sort of planned events and mm-hmm. plan some time and sort yeah. of, and even if you're not going to do something, just sharing the collection. Well, like you other. mentioned with your grandma, she came and said, hey, here's a rubber band for you. Right. She kind of shared that experience with right. you and then able to give that to you. And so. when I saw her, I was like, hey, you got rubber bands? You know, and I, I would, <laughs> it was a, they're the dumbest, you know, cheapest thing in the world. But She's smart though. Grandma but, knew it was oh, up. Oh, grandma totally knew it was up. And, but it worked. You know, yeah, it was cool. And uh, so that I definitely, definitely enjoyed that. So I just thought that's something we could, you know, you could, yeah. you could try to do that. So, no, I like it. I like it a lot. Cool. So the battlefield is really about situations that you get in with your kids yeah. where your adversary. Their <laughs> adversary. That's the best way of saying it, right? <laughs> well, that's a good word for it. I like it. Um, let's say it's it's a war zone. Okay. One of the Bombs. most common war zones, especially when the kids are younger, and yeah. if you don't uh, if you don't have some sort of regimen and really really strict about it, is going to sleep. Um, oh, jeez. I think it was uh, Samuel Jackson had the get the f to sleep book. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and it was so right on. I love was, that yeah. segment. Yeah, yeah. it's so funny. And it was very right on. So <laughs> one of the things that I've learned over time and through classes and everything else was about you know giving kids choices. Okay. And instead of telling them what to do, you just give them two options, and it works much better with smaller kids than than older kids. Yeah, my grandmother, I she had an awesome psychology, and I will say that's one of the things she did. I would say, hey, grandma, can I have this dessert? And she'd go, um. How about you have this apple for now, and then later you can have this dessert. Like, well, oh, it's okay. almost like this. Instead of saying, can you have the dessert or something like that, you say, well, you have two options. You can have this or this. Or curtain number two. And instead, of, and instead of actually, as the parent, asking them, do you want dessert? Right. Or what do you want for dessert? You yeah. say, hey, for dessert, we've got strawberries or apples. You know, like <laughs> you just give them the two options. Gotcha. Okay. Because yeah, it, yeah. it still empowers them to make a choice. Sure. And they get to make the choice. Right, so, right. And this works really well with toddlers and stuff like that. Yeah. Okay. Um, you know, as they get a little bit older, they, they decide, they realize they can, they like, can create a, a third choice. Yeah. You know? right. How about this one? Yeah. They're a little bit more creative. <laughs> but basically, getting to bed is, is often a battlefield. And so, oh, one sure. of the things we have stairs. And so, one of the things we did is when it was time to go to bed, first of all, we gave them some warning or something like that. And they'd go, no, I want to stay up. I want to blah, 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 I want to read more, whatever it is. If you give them a five-minute warning. We would say, how do you want to go up the stairs? Do you want to go like a cheetah uh-huh. or do you want to go like a turtle? Okay. <laughs> and it sounds really funny, but yeah. it was... It literally, you know, or you pick whatever animal, and 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 my son would always want to be a cheetah. He'd want to run as fast as he can up the oh, stairs. Oh, I would thought you know, they want to go as slow as possible. Well, no, and then my daughter would kind of do that sometimes. Or you just <laughs> pick, you know, two fast animals or whatever. Okay, it really doesn't matter. Yeah, but yeah. basically, you're still giving them the choice. They get to act out or be, and and literally, <laughs> there are times I'm on all fours, like you know, walking up the stairs, like you know, some sort of animal, and they follow and they go. Yeah, and yeah. you know, you make it sort of fun instead of like you know just berating them hey get upstairs get upstairs and that's that's kind of a battle that just goes on all the time now you know we've been pretty disciplined about it so that you know they they they're good about it sure sure but there's certainly those times when you're first starting out and you you, you've got to struggle and just be consistent with it so 
Um, I like that idea of giving them that choice and like kind of making it like it's a fun thing to at least get them to the halfway point of actually going up the stairs. Right. You know, that's the first the first first step step right there. Yeah, that's perfect. Then you battle as you brush your teeth. Then you battle as you get to sleep. Oh yeah, yeah. No, you want to brush like a cheetah. Right. It keeps going. So that's that's one of the things that you know from a battlefield standpoint. Yeah. We'll and we'll have some more you know some more ideas for. Yeah. No, that's a really good advice for adversarial uh, opponents (laughs) with your children. So next, we're going to uh, talk about supercharge, and what we mean by that is is you know product recommendations and things that we think that will enhance our lives or make our lives a little bit easier. And I had mentioned about uh, diaper rash, yeah, you know, and which of course, when your kids are out of diapers, it's not as it important. But maybe you, you know, sometimes they do get rashes or whatever. Sure. Yeah, there's a product called butt paste. Yes. I, I had mentioned this. Yeah. You had so on our this. first thing when we talked about this, I was flabbergasted that it was literally called butt paste. Yeah. And <laughs> I didn't I couldn't believe it was called that either. But there's this company, <laughs> Bordeaux, that makes this thing and it's called butt paste. There's some imitation ones you yeah. can buy at like Target and stuff. Right. But I kid you not, this stuff is amazing. Yeah. And every single time we changed our child, both children actually, yeah. we use this. Yeah. And our children never got rashes. Wow. And it, I mean, you think about it as sort of a trivial thing, but it's not because a rash can be so uncomfortable. Yeah. And they get horrible to their skin. Yeah. All this kind of stuff. Yeah. So for new dads or moms, you know, I'm sure there might be a couple moms listening. who just want to know what dads are thinking. (laughs) Um, butt paste is an awesome product and, you know, Put it on your wish list if you're going to have a new baby. Yeah. If your kids are in diapers, use it. Not, and you don't just wait until they have a rash. You actually use it every time you've cha- you change them. So you um, put it on every single day or apply it every time they're Every, every time you change them. Every time you change them. Which, when you have a oh. really small kid, oh, no geez. joke, you can go through 10 diapers a I day. was thinking that. Like, how many <laughs> diapers? What's the most amount of diapers you've ever had to go through in one day? I think we were at 10 or 11. 10 or 11. Yeah. I, there's oh. people with way more. Way more. I mean, yeah. And you're also paranoid because you're like, you know, you're a brand new baby. Every little thing that comes out, yeah. you're like, ah, oh, change it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, which you want to. You don't want them to sit it. Now, there's certainly, and that is actually a topic we're going to talk about on a future show, Okay, is the type of diaper. So there's a lot of people that, you know, are... Uh, go with cloth, cloth yeah. yeah, and sort of all natural, and then the versus yeah, versus other kinds of diapers sure, that are sure. synthetic. So, man, these are things I'm thinking about, you know, because I don't have a kid yet, and I think this is the most horrifying stage to me. Yeah. Is this whole when stuff comes out of them? You know what my <laughs> my child was the first diaper I had ever changed. Really? I, yeah, I never. I, I have sisters who have kids and stuff, but yeah, I'd never change. I, you know, I'm just a fun uncle. I don't have to change the diaper. <laughs> That's your job. Yeah, and uh, and I never babysat or anything. And yeah. I think most guys are probably like that. In yeah. fact. Are. There are some people that are even prideful that even after they have children, they don't change diapers. <laughs> I think that's ridiculous. No, you um, got to do it at least once. You know what? I actually had a shirt that was given to me uh, by um, by a family member that yeah. it says, uh, this dad does diapers. You know? <laughs> and I, you know, I was not against. I wouldn't even thought of not to do it. Uh, yeah. Um, but it, here's a funny story. There was a guy in the gym. I was at the, I used to go to the gym at the time. We're... Yeah, you still do, but <laughs> well, working out at home mostly. Sure, yeah, sure, yeah. right, right. And so this older guy, and mm-hmm. he's you know sort of grandpa age, and he was talking to me, and I said I was really excited. I'm like, yeah, I'm having a kid. This was when my first kid was coming. Sure, sure. And he's like, oh, I've had four children, and haven't changed one diaper, never changed one diaper. <laughs> and he was proud of this, you know. I'm like. Do your kids call you? Because I'm, yeah. I'm assuming you don't have a great relationship. With right, your you're a pretty stern dad. Now, traditional. You know, now that they're adults, but um, <laughs> no, it was just funny that how I mean, it was a different generation, maybe. Yeah, yeah. But even so, like to never change your child's diaper, it's not a fun thing. Don't get no, me wrong. no. And I, I, I totally expect it not to be fun, but especially it, when they pee on you. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> and I, I almost do deal with that. You know, it's more yeah. about the other stuff that comes out. That's the part that worries me. We won't get into that, but the butt pace is where we want to go. Yeah, yeah, that's true. <laughs> we were talking about butt pace, so let's just talk about that. Um, you know, you can you can buy it at most most grocery stores or, okay. or most you know Target or Walmart or no, I think most of those places. Sell it's it. literally called butt paste. Yeah, that's yeah, the I, name in fact, of the brand. I went to their website and they've got a bunch of different products and different yeah. stuff. But yeah, it's called butt paste. Okay. Um, and it's just great. It's great. I, when it was introduced, I, you know, I thought it was really funny, but yeah. it works. Stuff that's, works. That's awesome. Yeah. But basically, your local market. So now, on to the mailbag. Yeah. All right. We actually got, after our first podcast, we, we got a listener so we question. Have, we have a listener question. Now, granted, we've only done a little bit of this, so this is like a listener that listened to the I'm going to try to answer the question the best I can. I'm no expert, not yeah. claiming to be an expert, but some some experience, so I'm going to try to try to answer uh, this question. Yeah, right. Okay. So, all right. 
I'm going to read this question to you. What was the guy's name? Uh, Jimmy. Jimmy. We'll call him Jimmy because I think he'd probably not to use his real name. To protect the innocent, yeah. his name is Jimmy. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, here he writes, Jimmy writes, We have two kids. My wife works part-time and I work full-time. And we just don't seem to get the time to be together alone. He emphasizes alone. Yeah. Uh, money's tight, so hiring someone isn't very realistic. And we don't have a family nearby. Do you have any suggestions? And that was a very succinct question. <laughs> uh, yeah, how do you deal with this part of in- it? So. Interesting. So, okay, so no money. Well, it doesn't want to spend money and doesn't have family nearby. <laughs> no money or very so cheap. He already, he <laughs> obviously gets the gist that he needs to make some alone time with his wife. So that's, that's for sure. You have to go on date nights. You have to make time, not only for yourself yeah. when you have small children, but for each other. And sure. This was something that was pushing to me. So my mother was a relationship expert. Yeah. And so yeah. she had this formula. Yeah. And this formula that she taught was one night a week, you have date night. Okay. Uh, one night a month, you stay at an overnight somewhere. Oh. And then one a week a year, you have a vacation alone. Okay. So it was this formula to, to you know, and I have to be honest, I didn't live up to that formula. We try much more now to do that. Do you? Um, it was just, you know, it's something you, you kind of, I don't even know what the excuse is. I mean, some of it can be financial, like this guy. Some yeah. of it can just be time, whatever. But right, right. basically, one of the suggestions, and this was made to us, was to find another family nearby. You know, if you have neighbors mm-hmm. or, you know, even, you know, sibling friends or something yeah um where you can actually trade off and so you know let's say you have one or two kids whatever you take care of their kids for a night have a sleepover of some kind or even if you you don't even have to have a sleepover even if you just get out to dinner for two hours you know make it a six o'clock to eight o'clock and maybe the kids are staying up a little late watching a movie or something Yeah. yeah and you just the fact that you can go out alone and have some time to connect yeah it's extremely valuable and sure, so sure. you know family is obviously great if you have family oh, yeah. if you can afford it you know having a babysitter one night a week or something even every other week yeah. or something like that is really really valuable right but if you can't do the trade. You know, maybe it's every other week one family takes it, then the next one. At least you you have two dates. It's like kid bartering. Know? Totally. <laughs> totally. And you know, and if obviously if you make even more group people, you could go out more often, you could do that. You know, Oh, yeah, have like a rotating group of families. Absolutely. I mean, I knew when I grew up, I grew up in kind of a rural area and, you know, my neighbor or my friends, moms were basically mm-hmm. my mom when I was at totally. their place. Totally. So I would stay the night over or at least spend a few hours. My there. wife's family, that's absolutely how it was. Yeah. You know, they yeah. had um they lived close by to, you know, a couple of their friends yeah. and neighbors and they would all watch each other's kids. Yeah. You know, there was to some, this some day, single I parents. still can't call my friends moms by their yeah, first yeah, name. Yeah, single parents like, too, especially. So I mean, a single Mrs. parent that's trying yeah. to, you know, maybe go out and have some yeah. fun or do yeah. something, you know, you, you've got to be, find those resources. Sure, and so, sure. you know, and, and, and it can get expensive. I mean, you know, yeah. having a sitter and a good quality sitter. Well, is gonna, you know. And a lot of times when you're doing the sitter thing, you have to go out, you're going out on top of that. So you're like going out to dinner and doing all this stuff and you got to pay right. for the sitter. So. Right. And yeah. it's hard to find people you trust. Sure. And, you yeah. Know, that kind of thing. Yeah. And leaving Absolutely. a small children, small child with someone. <laughs> right. At least, you know, and sometimes the sitter's often are younger people yeah. or have a tendency to be younger. Sure. And so they don't, they may have experience with the children, but they don't have their own. Right. You know, right, often. Yeah. And so sometimes it is nice to have, you know, somebody who sort of the knows the ropes, too. who's already been Parents, there. Yeah. Although there's some sitters, we've had wonderful nannies and sitters oh, sure. and stuff like that. Sure, so, yeah. Um, but yeah, so I, that's what I would suggest for Jimmy, uh, right. you know, to do that. So cool. Cool. Yeah. Very good advice, Jimmy. Take it to the heat and uh, let us know how it goes. Yeah, for sure. Give us a <laughs> give us a uh, give us a, a shot back. back out. What's we got a, a podcast at dudes dot com. Yeah, uh, we have an email podcast at dudes dot com as well as the website www dot dudes dot com. Right on. Or uh, you can also go to our Twitter. Yes, dudes to dads. Just Twitter. Just <laughs> Twitter dot uh, com. Dudes to dads. Yeah, dudes to dads. At dudes to dads. That's right. And it's T O. Yeah, dudes to dads. Right. T O. Right. Gotcha. Um, so up next, we've got dad's homework. We, you know, not everybody loves homework, but yeah. this was something. So, um, you know, one of the things I had talked to you about is I have a meetup group 
that we we meet every third Tuesday of the month here locally in uh, in Encinitas, California. The origination of this, yeah, it's kind yeah. of where the concept came from. Yeah. It was a, it was a group of dads that you know sort of getting together. Yeah, um, and so this was a story that happened. We, I had given out homework assignments. Okay. And guys were like, really? Like, I'm like, homework? Come on. Really? So, (laughs) but I wanted to share this story. So, the homework is when you come home from work, if if you're a person that works away from home. Okay. You come home from work many times, and I'm guilty of this too. I, you know, I put my stuff down, I say hi to everybody, kiss my wife, hey, blah, 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 blah. And then we kind of go in and do what we're doing. We say, hey, kids, you know, nice to meet you. I kiss the kids, and, you know, everything's great. And sure. We just go into making dinner or getting, you know, just changing, whatever it is. Yeah. One of the things that I had suggested, and this was, uh, you know, something I had learned through the classes, was right when you get home, drop your stuff and pay t- immediate attention to the children. Okay. Or the child, or a child, or right. whatever. So instead of going and doing something else, um, and so one of the guys in our group told me this story, and you know, we had this homework assignment. He went home, and he literally, his, I think his kids were like six and eight, and he didn't recall a time when he actually had ever done this. Wow. You know, he's a great dad. Yeah, yeah. It, just this concept he had never done. He you just know, never He stopped. spends a lot of time with on weekends. He certainly yeah, you know, reads yeah. the bed and does all the stuff. But right when you come home from work, they haven't seen you all day. And, you know, my kids, it feels great. It's like, when, you know, they don't do it all the time. But when they do, they come running, hug you, whatever. <laughs> you hug them, kiss them, and then you're like, okay, great. That's, that's the part it. of dadhood I like. And that's that, it. That you, oh, come right. on, yeah. But it sort of ends right there. Yeah, yeah. And so the difference was is you actually go and you play with them or do something with them right away. You yeah, just drop yeah. what you're doing and you go. So this was a story. This guy has two kids. Mm. He had tried this, and he it was, it was interesting, the impact. So what had happened is he came home, and one of his, uh, I think it was his younger son at the time, six years old, uh, loved soccer. Yeah. And so he said, hey, Let's go outside and kick the ball. Do you want to go ball kick the ball? Which he had out. kicked the ball before with his son in his lifetime. Sure, but sure. But not right, right when he gets home. Right. Right, you know, right after work. Right after work. He hadn't seen him all day. Yeah. So he gets he gets there. He he goes and plays soccer with his, his son, kicking the ball back and forth in the backyard. And he, you know, the son's like, well, they want to come in for dinner. And the son's like, no, 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 let's keep playing. He's just having the <laughs> greatest time. The fact that his dad, you know, just did this small gesture. Yeah. It's yeah. a very small gesture. Right. And... So they come inside, they have dinner, and a tradition for a lot of them, they, they often will watch TV afterwards, sure. after dinner, and they're okay. sitting on the couch. His son, the little one, comes over and sits on his lap. Yeah. He had said his son had never, ever done anything like that. Wow. I when, he, when, when the guy was telling the story, I could yeah. see he was really affected by yeah, this, too. Yeah, yeah, This right. was something so little and so small yeah. that, and his his kid, who he loves, but like, you know, sometimes maybe not feel as close to whatever. This kid felt so good about that experience with his dad, simply just like an hour or whatever. Yeah. That he came over and sat, he didn't ask him to, did nothing, and just yeah. sat on the couch with him and was like kind of cuddling with him. Yeah. Yeah. And it was like, wow, yeah, it's, it's that just... easy, you know? <laughs> um, and so when he shared that with the group, it was just great. And right. So right. The homework for, you know, this session is to do just that, is to come home one of these days. Drop everything that you're doing. Don't mm. you know? Kiss everyone, hello, whatever. You know, say hellos, and then immediately go into an, a, w- whether you might want to, you know, play a game with them. Just draw with them. You know, if they're a little bit older, you know, play some sort of sport with them, yeah. or you know, even an act. It's an activity that they want to do. Right, right. You know, if if your kids like to color, they like to play a game, Puzzles whatever. Or yeah, whatever puzzle. It is. Um, or you know, just try to get into their world, and it's not just about asking them how their day was because right. that's not they don't want to, they don't care about that. <laughs> it's actually engaging in the activity yeah. hey, right now. Let's do that. You know, they haven't seen or you all day. You want to go do this? So yeah. that's it, and it's pretty amazing when stuff like that you know that happens, and it, so. and it makes it such a big deal for the kid because right. they're just the they realize that your world's hectic and crazy sometimes, so they don't want to bother you, especially if you're coming home. From sure. Work. And one so. of the other things that we talked about because um, one of the topics for today was kind of a, a reoccurring theme was about getting your kids to sleep. We were, we were a couple <laughs> segments were sort of about that, but the battlefield out. we talked about the, in the battlefield. Yeah. We talked about getting your kids to sleep. Well. Yeah. This is also conducive to helping them listen to you and get you know get to sleep easier sure. because they feel connected with you. Yeah, and yeah. so that's one of the reasons that they come out of bed and they're like, "Why?" Because they just don't feel that connected. Maybe you didn't spend enough time with them, whatever. 
So this is another thing is when you connect with them right away, yeah. they're going to feel that and be a little bit more apt to listening to you and to doing that. So maybe you'll reduce those battles. Yeah, that's a good point. Know. Way to tie it back in. So. <laughs> <laughs> that's what we're doing here. That's what we're doing. So. <laughs> right on. So the next segment is survival tips. Mm-hmm. Um, specifically, this deals with surviving your relationship. Right. And this more includes your significant other. Correct. Okay. Correct. Wife, girlfriend, whatever situation you, you're in. Right. Fiance, say, <laughs> yeah, um, <laughs> partner, you know, whatever, whatever, whatever you, you call, call it. it, yeah, yeah. But it's t- basically how to treat your woman a little better, okay, and how to survive your relationship, okay. So you think that when you have children, you tend to ignore your spouse to some degree, or your girlfriend, or whatever your or vice versa, episode. they ignore you. Oh, okay. Well, well yeah, we I mean that happens. Yeah, it, it, yeah, it's well, that's the whole reason for the for the date night. Yeah, you know, right. Um, but yeah, one of the things is you pay attention so much to your kids, both sure. you know, husband, wife, whatever. That yeah, you often forget to pay attention to each other. Sure, sure. That makes so sense. this was one piece of advice that I was given very early on because I like to solve problems. <laughs> I like to talk. Okay, you know, <laughs> I hadn't noticed this. About no, that. you know, and so when <laughs> and this is this happens all the time is somebody tells me something yeah. and I immediately go into solution mode. Okay. You know, oh, you're having that problem? Well, I'm the one who can solve it. You know, <laughs> you know. Put on your cape. You know. Yeah, and they're not even asking for it. <laughs> you know, I'm Mr. Advice with a big okay. A. Uh, you know, I probably deserve a different word. <laughs> but one of the things with women that I find um and this is kind of this happens with a lot of dads and yeah. even just guys in relationships. They want to give advice mm-hmm. and they want to solve the problem because that's as a man, that's how we feel we contribute. Mm-hmm. You know, we want to solve it. Oh, you, you're this poor little thing and we can, you know, we can help you and solve the problem. Yeah. Not a good idea. Right, right. Unless you're asked. Right. So one of the things I'd, I'd say is, uh, this is a huge survival tip, is don't give advice <laughs> Just listen. It, that's for a lot of people. I, <laughs> I'll say straight out. Sometimes I'm a very, yeah, I'm, I'm kind of the same way to some degree, but I'm also fairly sensitive considering mm-hmm. I'm a guy. Yeah. You know, I can be a complete pig. Don't get me wrong. Sure. But uh, a lot of times I just want to talk to hear myself vent about of it. Of course. I don't necessarily need advice. No. Unless I say, hey, what would you do? Right. Or, hey, I'm, I need your opinion about something. Then throw all the advice you possibly can at me. But I'm going, oh, this sucks and I hate blah, blah, blah. And this well, why don't you do this then? Yeah, and it's like, dude, I know. Yeah. <laughs> I know what to do. I figured that out already. I'm just venting. Right. Yeah. Or you know what not to do. And I wouldn't want it to do. Yeah. yeah. And so exactly. that that's something, I, I mean, granted, it works for just peers, too, or your yes. friends or oh, whatever. absolutely, yeah. Um, Probably more and, so. and I learned that quite, I think, early on is just, just to kind of listen and yeah. not try to give advice. So if my yeah. wife, you know, she might have some difficulty or some situation, you know, I, just you're just there to listen yeah. and say, gosh, you know, that... That that sucks. Or <laughs> yeah, you know, Pat on the I'm, back, I, yeah. I'm hugs. so well. I'm sorry to hear that. Right. That must feel horrible. Or how yeah. does that? Or even ask like, you know, how does that feel? Does or that whatever. Make you feel right. Um, <laughs> those are those are things though that that, that make a big difference. And they so do. the idea of you know you want to survive. You don't have to be the answer guy. Yeah. You don't have to solve everyone's problems. Sure. Sure. Just listen sometimes. Yeah, I know that. Even just even being at work. In, oh, absolutely. No, it's true. It's true. Right. Sometimes again, it's all about the 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 that will help them solve it for themselves. Right. That's what I've noticed about that too. Is that being in relationships, uh, a lot of people are just talking to kind of talk it out, and mm-hmm. you kind of can coax them into it and guide them into it, but you don't necessarily have to give them advice what to do because it's their problem. Right. So you can't let them. You know, you got to let them try to figure it out. For yeah, and it's way different. Like you said, if they're asking for your advice. Yeah. You know, hey, Alan, you know, what do you think I should do in this situation? You know, Um, or, you know, you know, how would you handle this? Whatever. That's a different situation. Yeah. And then I'm like, okay. And then you can, then you can spill out everything you want. Although now there's a caveat here. I've had a situation where I've just listened and then they looked at you and they look at you and they say, what, you don't have any, (laughs) you don't have anything to say. (laughs) So you got to be careful. I can't be perfect. Yeah, well, so that that's the that's the wonderfulness of dealing with the opposite sex is you don't ever have you know it's it's never consistent you know it's never consistent so. right right but I think uh, the a general rule that would be be a good one to follow at first for sure yeah okay yeah. so moving on yeah uh, in addition to survival tips we have what we call smooth operator yeah so this is really about <laughs> more on the romantic side is it, instead of just 
you know, talking about, you know, how to survive with your woman. It's really about, <laughs> you know, because let's, let's be honest, a lot of men, that's what they want. Sure. You know, they sure. want to be romantic. They want to be intimate. Yeah. And, you know, and so how do you do that? Right. What, what are some suggestions on ways to do that? Because the truth is, you know, you've got to be good outside the bedroom in order to be, you know, oh, right. successful. Right. Inside the bedroom. Okay. You know? So one of the things, this was also from my mother, which seems a little weird saying. (laughs) But still, I get it. Yeah. Yeah. It was advice. She was an advice, a relationship (laughs) expert. Yeah, exactly. Tying back. Yeah. She wasn't saying, hey, Jason, here's how you do it. Here's how you do do your wife. (laughs) This was something, she actually wrote a book. This was a book that she wrote called The 10 Second Kiss. Oh. And uh, it did. Yeah. Another, and, and so one of the things that works pretty well yeah. is in the morning if you leave for work mm-hmm. give your wife's significant other a 10 second Just, pretty passionate kiss okay long drawn out long drawn maybe out maybe some kiss. tongue involved uh, you, you got to use your discretion sure <laughs> uh the idea is though you're leaving right you're you're not you're just doing this with the idea that you're just doing it. Sure. You're not trying to get sure. anything from it. You're yeah, not trying yeah. to be intimate right then. Right, right. And what it does often is sort of triggers that excitement, you know, because when you just have a long, you know, because a lot of people when they leave or even when they leave the house or they leave whatever, they just peck, you know, hey, all right, you know, and see ya. Yeah. You know, and it's not a lot of thought. Fist bump. I'm out. <laughs> <laughs> I saw that on a dating show once. <laughs> Guy was fist bumping the girls that he was dating. No wonder he was single. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Chest, chest bump. <laughs> hey, come here, hon. Come on. Uh, let's yeah. do this. <laughs> no, I, I don't think that works. But, okay. <laughs> uh, so the, anyways, the 10-second kiss leaves sort of that, whoa, like what was that? You know? Yeah. And can kind of set you up sometimes. And you can't really do these things with expectations. Yeah, yeah. But I can say that it can set you up for later that evening potentially. Cool. Okay. At least a little bit warmer than when you get home. Yeah. And oftentimes I say, oh, wow. You know, hey. And then, maybe they're, and then maybe even throughout the day. They're thinking about it. They're thinking about it. You can text them, okay. whatever, and saying, hey, was just thinking about yeah. you, really enjoyed that. That's it. Right, right. Yeah. Don't be trying to say, hey, now maybe we can do this later. And, you know, <laughs> just, that's it. Just, yeah, just let them, let them think about it. Let don't them get stew the expectation. in that. Let them stew. Let them stew. <laughs> just get, you know, it's hard to yeah. not have expectations because as guys, that's what we typically always want. Sure, sure. But you really have to think about it that way. It's just like, you know what? I'm going to enjoy this. I yeah. really want to give this to this, you know, the person. Um, and, and that's it. That's all it's I'm like, trying yeah. to do. Yeah. It's expressing your love romantically yep. at that point. And yeah. a 10 second kiss is a long time. Think you about don't that. think about it. No, it, no. 10 seconds doesn't sound like a lot from a, it you is. Know, from a, your whole day standpoint. But, but when 10 you skip, and, when you're just sitting there kissing, it, yeah. it is a long time in comparison to what you typically would do. Right. <laughs> so that was the idea I think behind my mother's book was, you know, it's this ability to reconnect simply through a kiss. You know, it's right. a simple gesture. Yeah. It's a simple thing. Yeah. Um, I mean, she obviously expands on it and goes pretty deep, but, um, so yeah, it, it was just, it just, yeah. you know, just try it and, and see what happens. Yeah, and yeah. so, and let us know the result. So, uh, once <laughs> Share again, all your intimate moments. With no, us. no, I don't want to hear it. I really don't want to hear it. Uh, but we would like to know if it's just successful. I lost my job. I stayed home at work, yeah. and we just started making out. Yeah. <laughs> so be uh, you can reach us, or once again, tell us your information or your stories at uh, podcast at dudes to dads dot com. That's right. Uh, visit us online website www.dudestodads.com. Yeah, any feedback you can give, or you want to talk about your kid, your kids, uh, the mailbag, get us a get us a shout out. Podcast at dudestodads.com. Um, you also have a quote that you wanted to pr- provide for the. The end of the show. Oh, I was. And this I, is uh, Tim Allen, I believe. Yeah, you know, it's funny. I I came across this. Um, of all people, Tim Allen. This is kind of. Yeah, funny. I know. It was funny. <laughs> well, we were doing some research for the show. Yeah, right. Exactly. And thinking about you know the one. Actually, I think it came through the product recommendations because we were thinking about like supercharging it and like, yeah, yeah, you know how to make things. Uh, and so Tim Allen came to mind because he used to do that with everything. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like turbocharging and making yeah, things, yeah. adding batteries, more power, more power, more yeah. power. That's what it was. <laughs> That's right. But you know what? One of the sh- one of the things that he said, and this was a quote. I think it's a good thing to end on. Sure. Sure. Is it, this was like this list of Tim Allen quotes, and you know a yeah. lot of them are that or jokingly just, thing. But this yeah, is actually he's a, he's a serious. comedian. He was. Yeah, this, yeah, but this was serious. It said, "Dads need to show an incredible amount of respect and humor and friendship toward his mate, so that the kids understand their parents are sexy, they're fun, and they do things together. They're best friends. 
Kids learn by example. If I respect mom, they're going to respect mom. Wow. And I thought that was that's, that's great. It's a profound statement from yeah. Tim Allen. Yeah, totally. <laughs> I know. It must have been the writers. <laughs> yeah, right. um, so no, I think the you know the idea is so true. Kids just emulate and they copy what you do. And so how you treat your significant other, your wife, your girlfriend. Um, when you have children, they absolutely watch that. And yeah. if you want to build and have respectable, you know, moral children, you have to emulate that behavior. Sure, you sure. know, you have to do that. Yeah. There, you, you can't. It's not a double standard. It's not, you know, hey, you know, do as I say, not as I do. Right. You know, you really have to live that. And so, when you are respectful to your wife, it's not, you know, it's not that you're not going to get in arguments. It's not that you're, you know, going to have disagreements. Whatever. You have to be respectful about it. Right. And so, you know, when you can do that and you think about it, it's like, you know what? There's people watching me here. These kids Absolutely. are totally they totally know what's they going on. They learn your behaviors too. That's Absolutely. The yeah. So they 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 see what you're doing, they emulate it, you know, and you wonder your child all of a sudden yells at you. You wonder where they learn that. <laughs> you know? It must be their friends at school that they oh, right. learned that from. All their from. peers and the television they're watching. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it's you know certainly could not be he learned that in the home. You know, <laughs> that's absolutely they 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 learn and they and it's even more funny when you see their behavior in something that you've done. Yeah, yeah. You know, I mean, even sayings like our my daughter the other day said like, "Really, mom." You know, where'd you get that? <laughs> right, you right. Know? Um, whether it was me or my wife, it was yeah. just, you know, the idea that, you know, a four year old sort of saying that. Yeah. It, it, it's, you know, <laughs> so they, they totally copy what you do. That's awesome. So yeah. Yeah. With that, uh, we're going to conclude here. Uh, podcast two. Thanks again, Alan, for, uh, for, uh, well, just being here. <laughs> Thank you, Jason. I, I asked a bunch of people and nobody came, and Alan was the only guy that showed up. <laughs> just kidding. So, Alan's really the brains behind this uh, for, from a producing standpoint and everything else. If you guys need uh, any assistance creating a podcast or doing anything technical related to a podcast, uh, where can they find you, Alan? Uh, Twitter, Alan H. Bush. Alan H. Bush. Uh, awesome. Yeah. Excellent. You are a Kreidman. That's the, my day job. Yes. Yes. <laughs> um, but the dudes, the dads. Dudes, the dads first. Yeah. This yeah. is what we're, what we're dealing with. So awesome. anyways, thanks, guys, and uh, see you next time.